they approve the October 11th, 2018 regular meeting minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the uh, previous planning committee mission meeting minutes. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 And any uh, reports and correspondence? Just real quick, I want to. When we reorganized in January, we had the December Planning Commission meeting moved to December 12th, Wednesday, because not uh, second Thursday. Just want to confirm that we want to keep it there. It was some conflict that you had. Oh, uh, yeah, it's right. So oh, that's right. the next meeting will be December 12th, Wednesday. I appreciate that. that sure we want to yeah. Keep it there? Yeah, that's okay with everybody here. Okay. I think it should be. We, we rescheduled at the beginning of the year, I remember that, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we changed to February, March, and December meetings. I appreciate that. Thank you. <clears throat> Other than that, that's Can it. Can you just remind uh, yes. your assistant to tell, just so everybody remembers? Okay. Um, any site plan subdivisions filed for review? Two. Tracy final subdivision plan. It's a one lot subdivision on Country Brook Drive. And the other one is Lasanti subdivision plan number one, a one lot subdivision off of Turkey Foot Road. Uh, any uh, changes to the agenda, Ed? No. Um, any audience comments on items not on the agenda? Please come up. How are you all this evening? Uh, my name is Ryan Jaroski. I'm the assistant manager here at Peters Township. Thank you all for having me. Ed, thank you for the invitation tonight. Um, in my short time, I've been in Peters Township two years. One of the things that's been most impressive is not only the talent we have on our boards but the and expertise, but also the energy and enthusiasm for people to volunteer for those boards. Uh, here at Planning Commission, you've always had a great resource in Ed, now in Seth. Uh, but one, one of the things we as the administration have not done well to this point is to help all of our boards, all of our commissions understand where they fit in the structure of Peters Township government, what their role is, and what are some of the, uh, their duties and the limitations of their power. That's been rectified recently. Uh, Paul Lauer put together the uh, board and commission handbook that you see before you tonight. Um, it's purpose is really several fold um, to help members out like I said understand your role in Peters Township government um, where you fit in in terms of the entirety of the townships uh, organization provide information on how each committee functions uh, this is more redundant for all of you uh, as you've been together for some time now information on state and local laws that govern your work municipalities planning code and your place specifically and uh, probably most importantly, provide a code of conduct for members uh, in terms of your interactions here when you are in session, when you're out in the community, and interactions with the staff as well. Um, we're going around every board, Paul and I, we're splitting them up. Luckily for you, you get me. The Zoning Hearing Board gets Paul. Um, and we're just providing this to uh, e each of you. Please review it. If you have any questions, if uh, you need to talk about anything you see in there, I would encourage you all to uh, reach out to me. So. Any questions, Ron? Okay. Thanks so much. Thanks. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, thank thanks you. for putting it together. Thank you all. Okay. Any other audience comments? Uh, moving on to uh, new business planning commission recommendation, final plan, Lawson Reese subdivision, McClellan Road. Yep. Richard and Deborah Lawson, husband and wife, and their daughter Tracy Lawson own two adjoining properties. Uh, they total approximately 10 acres. They're located off McFallen Road. Um, the Lawson subdivision plan is doesn't create any new lots. It's a simple re-subdivision. Currently, this is. Uh, Richard and Deborah Lawson's lot, and then this is the border between Peters and Union Township. This is McClellan Road here. So the lot line is the actual border, believe it or not. Um, and this is uh, Tracy's lot. The subdivision plan, we have that. 
sh shifts this lot line from the border to a more perpendicular line to McClellan Road. Um, the lot sizes pretty much stay the same. It's a simple re-subdivision, taking this line and eliminating it as a lot line and creating a new lot line here. This, is, this will be Tracy's lot, which is four plus acres. And then this is uh, Richard and Deborah Lawson's lot. So staff's recommending that we approve the plan. A simple resubdivision subject to those three conditions listed in the uh, report. It doesn't create any new lots. Simple resubdivision. So where, where does the house houses sit? The the house is township. Here. What's that? One house, Tracy's house is in Peters. Okay. Richard and Deborah's house is in you. And that'll, that won't change. Okay. So that's staying, the houses are staying in the township that they started in? Correct. So, and this is a recommendation to council. This plan will go to council sometime here in maybe the end of November. Any uh, comments? Any audience comments? Can I get a motion to approve, please? I'll make a motion to approve the uh, recommendation, uh, approve the recommendation to council for the Lawson Resub Division as detailed in the Planning Commission memo uh, dated November 1st, 2018, subject to the three conditions there. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Next on the agenda is Planning Commission approval for Confluence Financial Partner Site Plan. This is a site plan, so this is a planning commission approval. This plan does not move any further to, on the council. Um, the <coughs> applicants' consultants are here tonight, and I'm just going. I'm going to let them walk the planning commission and the audience through their proposed plan. I'm just going to hit some key points here. Um, the property that we're dealing with here is at the intersection of Bebout Road, East McMurray, Thompsonville. It's the site of currently being used by Just About Kids. Um, the property is zoned Mixed Use Activity 2, MA2, and the proposed use is uh, professional office space. The proposed tenant is Confluence Financial Partners. That's a company that's owned by a Peters Township resident, and he wants to move his headquarters here into Peters, and they're currently located in South Point. Um, nice. I'm going to hit some key points. I'll let them get into site access and stormwater management. One thing I do want to point out is that this project is not subject to traffic impact fees. The daycare center actually generates a lot more traffic than this office building, so there will be no traffic impact fee. Um, so staff's recommending that the planning commission approve the plan subject to those 12 conditions in my report, and we can adjust those, we can amend those as we, after we hear the presentation by the consultants. Good evening, my name is Jamie Harshman. I'm the civil engineer for this project. Uh, here with us tonight is uh, Laura McCauley. She's the engineer, did most of the technical work on it, honestly. And then we got the architect as well as a representative of the owner of the property here as well. I'll flip through a couple slides here, Seth, if you help me out. The uh, existing conditions plan, you can see pretty well from the satellite photo, but this plan right here is the existing conditions plan. We've got the, uh, the building that's there right now, we've got the, the loop uh, drive, drive around entrance, the governor's drive, if you will, the parking lot around it, there's the playground area right here. Uh, features on this existing site that I want to point out before we get into our development plan, existing driveways. There's two existing driveways uh, with permits on the state roads. We're keeping those the same. We don't want to have to mess with that. So we kept those access points as is, designed our site within <coughs> Uh, to make that work. There's also um, existing stormwater management on this site. This had an underground detection system in it. Uh, we have left what we could, but really provided a brand new system altogether. And I'll talk about that on the plan uh, a little bit later here. The site has existing, I mentioned access, existing utilities, existing stormwater, existing HOP. So it's a really good uh, 
candidate for what we'll call redevelopment of this into a new use. Uh, if you'll flip, Seth, you don't mind, to the site plan drawing. So this plan uh, should give a good illustration of the general zoning parameters of the property, the parking layout, the building layout. Uh, in real small print down here on the screen, but you should be able to read it on your plan as a zoning table where we've laid out all of the requirements out of the zoning ordinance as far as the number of parking spaces, the setbacks required, buffer areas, uh, landscaping, etc. to show specifically that this layout means your ordinances. Um, I'll point out a, a couple things on this plan. Uh, the parking spaces, you can, you can see pretty good the layout here. We kept a lot of the access and circulation the same. Of course, the governor drive is gone. <laughs> this layout. Uh, one of the things I'll point out on the back side of the property, we're holding that same line. Existing pavement's there right now. We're going to reconstruct it, and our new pavement is going to be right on, on that existing line. To the right of the property, the existing pavement is out, out here right now. In order to get the buffers uh, that we need, we're actually moving that back about 10 feet. So there'll be about 10 feet more green space to the right of our property uh, after we build a new parking lot. Trash enclosure uh, located in the rear corner. Uh, we've got a lighting plan you'll see in your packet. So there's um, light poles, LED, uh, fully shielded uh, lighting throughout the site. We've got a photometric plan for you to show that we meet your ordinance requirements. Approximately 9,000 total square feet, uh, 4,000 4, and some changes the footprint the building, two stories. Uh, we've got sidewalks around, around the building all together. Um, all the way around the thing, we've got a public courtyard out front. Uh, we've got sidewalks that are proposed uh, to be extended along the road frontages. Um, th this, there's a sidewalk shown on the plans up here. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, at, the, at the recommendation of the Township Planning Department, we're going to hold off on, on constructing that. And instead, our sidewalk is going to circulate through. The reason being, Pendleton has a, an intersection plan that's in the works. And so we've, we've uh, proposed some modifications to this area to leave enough room for that to be built without issue. Uh, are there plans for a right turn, right turn lane? There are some Based on their layout, they don't, I don't know if it's the right turn lane. There's not a lot of widening proposed, uh, but they had some grading shown we'll in this We'll pop area. it up here real quick, but uh, let me try. Yeah, that was going to be my question was what's planned out the plan? How's it well, going to affect not. this? I thought we had it. I'll see you guys All right. Sorry, in, 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 well, the concepts we've seen and what we've used to, to lay out our design involved a, about a 10 foot more right of way that they need along here. Uh, now, what they do within that right of way, that's up, up to them. Uh, regardless, there, we saw no point in building a sidewalk in an area that we know Penn is going to wipe it out in. Uh, so, as a trade off, in order to provide pedestrian access through, this sidewalk is going to continue out here. I think you'll see that in one of the confident conditions of, of approval tonight. <clears throat> I want to point out this line right here. This is a retaining wall. Uh, we're proposing uh, 120 foot in length retaining wall from one end to the other. We're asking the Planning Commission for a uh, allowance to go six and a half feet tall for about a uh, 30 to 40 foot section right here. So th this is a retaining wall. Reason for that being the road climbs up here, this entrance is low, this entrance is low in order to get a site uh, that really works for cars and traffic and pedestrians and uh, a flat footprint around the building. Uh, this retaining wall was laid in right here. We've got a, this is a patio outside the courtyard area that would be the aesthetic front of the building. Stormwater management, I'll talk about that a little bit. So we've got inlets uh, spaced uh, around the property. We've got a, an underground, uh, basically an oversized underground detention uh, pipe that's been uh, designed with a routed outlet structure right here. And ultimately that flows through then the existing tank, which is gonna stay out here in the grass area, ultimately discharges through uh, what is a, a rain garden and a level spreader right here. Now that the stormwater system is sized to meet the ordinance requirements as far as uh, volume rate control, et cetera, uh, one of the, the things we are going to add to the plan uh, is to actually clean out this rain garden. It's a little bit overgrown and muddy and swampy, so that's one of the conditions the planning department asks for is that we clean that up, so we'll be doing that, uh, as well as coordination to get a, uh, um, a Green box upgrade just on the, on the other side of this line so that this is proper. But 
hopefully we get all that worked out and, and designed into the plan as well. We got I mentioned utilities. Uh, we've got uh, water vault right here for um, the, the building will be sprinklered. Uh, so there's a hydrant shown right here. We'll have a fire department connection. And of course, that's our water vault right here. Other equipment, we've got HVAC equipment uh, tucked in back here. We got some landscaping, a uh, transformer pad uh, here. But again, we'll be screening around it. Um, I'd like to flip to the landscaping plan next. Okay, this is, this is, let me go back to that one. Now this is uh, going to change a little bit. Flip to the retaining wall plan, if you don't mind. There we go. So this is an elevation view of how that wall is going to go from left to right. Left would be here. Uh, if you're facing that wall over that way. So this is the area we've got about say, 30 to 40 feet where it's going to be six and a half feet tall. Sorry about that. That's all right. Uh, can you talk about the materials of that retaining wall, please? Materials of the retaining wall. So this will be a cast-in place or poured-in place retaining wall. So our structural engineer, a couple things to consider about building this wall. In order to build it um, as simply as possible, also without any risk to the roadway, which is 15 feet away from the wall, uh, the wall is going to be a cast-in place wall with a tow foundation. So the, the structural support of the wall or the, the toe of the wall will be subgrade at the front of it uh, to resist the overturning movement rather than you might see a wall with a heel design where the heels are buried under the dirt. Uh, so the idea would be for this wall in particular, the only excavation needed will be to set the formwork at the rear of the wall and then the toe of the foundation will be towards the building. Cast in place wall. Original idea was we wanted to do a, a versa lock or a keystone wall. Um, but those walls, when you get up six, eight feet tall, you start having to do uh, grid tiebacks into the hillside. And we, we could probably do it, but we didn't want the risk of the Pendel project or somebody else or widening the road or whatever to impact that wall. So instead, it's going to be cast in place. I know they're going to pick some type of aesthetic stamp to the front so it'll look like natural stone or uh, whatever the folks that dream bigger than I did would choose. And, and Jamie, the face of the wall actually faces the building, correct? That's exactly so, right. So the face of the wall is on this side. Right? So this view is what you would see being down here on the sidewalk in front of the building. Road is above six feet, six, eight feet above the grade of the building. What you would see from the road would be the, the decorative cap of the wall. And then, of course, you would see the, the guard railing that will have to be a decorative railing constructed across the top just so nobody goes over it. And that's what we, we showed on here conceptually is the decorative railing. They probably won't step it exactly like that, but you get the idea. Is that eight feet? Eight feet? I have to show eight and a half feet. However, we modified that slightly and given that some notes on that, we only need six and a half feet. We've so moved some things away from the road a little bit. Uh, so the only thing we're asking for is, is a slight variance to six and a half feet. Your ordinance allows six. So we're asking for a little bit more. We, we tried to get it to six, but it's just not going to give us that little bit of uh, cap that we need at the top of the wall. So is that a variance or a modification of this? It's not a variance. It's just a modification. Like a like modification. Right. modification. The, the guard on top, what type of material is that? Because that's really what's going to be visible from the road. It will be visible. And I'm going to defer to uh, David Plain, the architect on this. Do we have any ideas of what that's going to look like? Um, yeah, basically it would be a black metal um, that, uh, that'll take the, the load for requirement for the 42 inch height and the, and the fall protection. So the reed would be like a black iron uh, fence on there. Um, and uh, that's uh, and it would be continuous along the, uh, the you know, the whole plan of the footprint of what you see there. Understood. Thank you. Uh, I'm trying to do the last thing. Is, right? is that what's shown in the plans here? There's a, yeah. that, yes. Yeah. The vertical, the picket, right. Yeah, there'll be vertical pickets. We've got to meet NCA 117 for a 42 inch guard, and so the vertical pickets have to be pretty funny from 42 inches tall. Um, I want to show you this plan because I think it's the prettiest anyway, but this is the landscaping plan. So you can see the buffers that we reserved around the perimeter. So this is a specific planted buffer with trees and shrubs spaced uh, appropriately around um, the outside perimeter. This is important to us because you've got houses you know, behind it, and I wanted to point out the fact that we've got this screening. Uh, on the right side, we've got an extra 10 feet beyond us there right now, so we're, we're hopeful that that's... Is there any trees you know, there now? There, yes. Well, um, yeah. Where was Laura? There's a view um, on the side on the 
right side. But not to right. this level. <clears throat> they big as large as these proposed trees. Yeah. Significant. Uh, I hope that we'll keep those in place and just add to the area. Absolutely. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So we'll make a you no know, question to make a note on the. Do we need to make a note on our recommendation? Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 So the I would like to note on our plans to protect existing trees as much as possible. Right. That would be fine. And I think that would be in our interest as well. I think those trees there on the show is two inch caliber. That's a pretty small tree. Can we increase that to maybe three or four inch caliber? Well, you, you probably run into that, and I know this is they don't survive. Uh, two inch caliber is standard nursery stock size for a, for a new aesthetic tree uh, or shade tree. But three to four inches are hard to plant to have them survive. Also, they're a lot more expensive. So. Um, I mean, obviously, you can ask I would defer to our client as to whether they have any concerns with it. Our recommendation would be to make should survive better, and in another year or two, they're up to that size anyway. Two inches are two inches are Okay. For the uh, buffers that you're putting in around the size there, uh, the lighting that you're going to put up, would that uh, kind of hold back some of the glare at the homes? Well, that's a good point. Um, there really shouldn't be any glare in the homes because they're fully shielded lighting. Um, uh, the points wall made it sure that the row of trees is... <coughs> trees do a couple of things. One, they're going to help you sound, pavement, noise, and traffic. Uh, they're also going to help you from light. Uh, any light that you get, headlights or any, anything like that, trees and shrubs are going to protect from that. Is that their purpose? I don't know. So no help. I mean, the light poles in the building plan are going to be down in here somewhere in between the, the trees. So they'll, they'll, be, uh, they'll be 22 feet tall, so full height, and nine heights of the light poles. So when the trees are about maturity, they'll be 23 feet tall, so the lights will be tough right in there. So. Is there any issue with the trees on top of the stormwater management? You mentioned there's something there now. You're obviously planting more trees. I'm just looking for the No, it should be fine. This this is just a pipe over here, uh, and it's the old pipe. We just kept it because it, it functions. There's no reason to tear it out. It gives us a little extra, uh, a little extra control on the site. The, the pipe sits right here, and the trees will be planted beside it. It's it's not a uh, it's not an infiltration pipe or anything that we do worry about root intrusion or anything like that. Our, our pipes underneath the pavement are, are uh, the ones that actually perform most of the stormwater management. Those will be the new system. Could you just talk quickly about the discharge of that specifically as it pertains to the property line? Sure. So the uh, stormwater management plan for the site previously, yeah. uh, we tried to stay in, uh, in concert with that or to stay consistent with that as much as possible there. The ultimate discharge point is a, a rain garden, we call it that, it probably was just a stormwater pond at the time, but it's, it's functioning similar to a rain garden because you've got uh, some wet areas that the water can sit in. So there's an end wall right here existing that discharges into the pond, and there's a level spreader, existing <coughs> level spreader, and then ultimately that's received by a, a small stormwater box just, just across the property line. So what we've tried to stay consistent with is that levels for the discharge of the site. So with the stormwater management controls we're proposing, uh, we will reduce the volume and reduce the rate even beyond what's there existing, and it's still going to discharge the same manner, same location. Uh, now there is a, a small section of drainage, there's two inlets over here that tie right into the state system. Uh, we've, we'll have to re reconfigure those two inlets but the drainage area of those two inlets is less than pre-developed, so we're in, in effect reducing the runoff in that direction without changing anything other than reducing the drainage area. The major point of discharge is uh, we'll be up this side. And your, your storm management counts that accounts for a 20% reduction in previous for that. Did you, did you obtain that through your site plan design? Through the, well, through the site plan design and stormwater management, if I remember right, the way we did that is the 20% reduction was achieved as the difference between the daycare center and the office building that were proposed. So the increase in impervious and then 20% of that. So right. it wasn't as hard as it sounds because our site was developed beforehand. And that, that was a scenario that we got approved with Marks and Midas before we even started. 
just so we knew what target we were shooting at. Because we had an existing plan, existing development, existing stormwater management system, but it didn't meet our current standards. So to try to find a way to to deal with that, uh, that was that was the way we looked at it. Does that make sense? I think so. So you're basically meeting today's standards. Yes. With a total 20% reduction of what was there with the daycare. Exactly. And I want to point out one thing. There is a small, I'll call it a yard drain on the neighbor's property that we have gotten the developer to agree to upsize with your permission. And we were going to work that out after we got through this approval process. That'll, that'll help that, uh, you call it a rain garden, uh, well, drain better. You said it won't be a wet spot there when you cut the grass. There's a little cattail in that corner, too. You can clean it out. It's part of our stormwater facility. Thank you. Right. Yeah, that's right. So our developer said no problem. We'll replace that box on behalf of the township, and you guys will get permission to do it. Is that your property? Yes, it is. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's great. And, and you can see the rest of the, the aesthetic plannings and the screening around the transformer, et cetera, on this plan. Um, to give you all the high points that I, I wanted to share with you regarding site planning, infrastructure, zoning, how we've met the ordinances, uh, any questions from the commission before I would sit down. Ben, for, uh, I'll, when, has PennDOT made it known when they're going to do that intersection? Not when. They, they haven't let us know when, but it's coming. We don't know if it's going to be soon, but it's, it's probably a few years down the road. I, I want to point out, though, that uh, the what's the applicant's name there? Uh, Gregory James, James Ventures LLC has been very cooperative with the township. They have designed this site so that that project could proceed without any impact on this development. They've moved everything out of the way. Even designing the wall that they are designing it is uh, accommodating that future project. And then we're going to go through the architecture now. Sure. Absolutely. Is this a pointer? It's just a pointer. I'm going to get asked if I'm ready. It's the pointer. Set and put. Hello, I'm Dave McLean, I'm McLean Architects. And this is a rendering of the um, of the uh, one of the uh, longer elevations of the, of the building. This one faces east, which is facing our parking lot. Um, this isn't the McMurray Road side, this is the parking lot side. Um, so um, basically the building has a stone base um, up to about three foot four inches off the grade um, with a uh, precast um, cap at the top of that. So the look of a stone cap on the top of that uh, stone base. And then brick is our, is our main building material. And then we've got, as you can see, we've got balcony areas where basically this plane actually pushes back a bit from the main brick plane. So we go back there off of our bearing wall and we go to a um, composite panel finish on those uh, locations where that's pushed back like that. So we've got our three main uh, building materials of stone, brick, and then the composite panel uh, material. And then the roof is a, is a um, gable, um, uh, continuous ridge, um, and that's actual slate. We're going to use real slate as our, our roof material. Um, so the, the, the interest in our clients is in actual uh, real material. So we're um, designing with real stone, actually, you know, obviously brick, and then real slate as, uh, as the roof material. So we can uh, go to the next slide. Do we um, want some interior or exterior exterior? Pardon on the exterior. Um, right. Oh yeah, these are, yeah, just the outside. Yeah. Um, and then these are the uh, the other elevations. This is the south elevation. Um, and it's got the balcony wrapping the upper level. Um, there's a projection on the first floor, so this plane, this these planes right here are out from this one, so there's a <coughs> conference room that pushes out a bit underneath the balcony. Um, and then, again, we've got our composite metal where we're above the, uh, um, the uh, balcony areas. And then you can see the slope uh, of the roof um, uh, in the profile there. And then this is the north face. This would be the face uh, at the corner 
when you're on, on facing um, East McMurray and, and Bebow. And that's our stair tower at the end. Uh, this is all glass, and then the profile of the stairs would read um, through there. So we've got a generous amount of glass. Um, and then on the profile... So on the, um, the right-hand side is where McMurray is on the bottom one. That, on this one, that's right. McMurray okay. would be over here. That's right. You can see how we're implying how we're going up that, that grade right there. That's the, um, that's the one facing McMurray right that's there. That's correct. Okay. That's right. And you see we've got a similar profile on the, on the elevation in the front, that, that balcony that wraps around the south side here, and then a small balcony above the uh, center of, uh, of the building on that side. So this is your McMurray Road elevation here. And as we know, we're going to have that wall coming up, starting very low right here, coming up along here, and getting over to our six and a half foot height right here. And that's very fortunately where we have the outside HVAC equipment is right at that spot where we're taking advantage of that wall to, to tuck them in. There's two pieces of equipment um, right there. Um, and, and again, the, the attractiveness of the building is the fact that we do have a slate roof, sloping roof. We don't have any rooftop equipment um, and things like that. Our mechanical equipment's in the basement with the, just a couple of outside pieces that are hidden in that neck. Um, and then if we look at this space again, this is very similar to the other side, but we've got the, the stone, this is our brick face here, and then right here you can see we've got these lines coming down here. These are actually the, the line of the downspouts as they come down, and we're, when we're up in this profile right here, we actually have timbers that are in that profile of the overhang, and then we follow that line um, coming back toward the building, and then we have the um, uh, precast like a stone panel right here where that, that um, timber returns to the building right there. So if we can go back one to the side elevations, um, the, the two, the north and the south one, um, you can see the profile of those timbers is here. So we bring a, a deep overhang here, then we have a timber that runs along the top edge of that, and then comes down here like that, returns to the building, and that's where when it hits the brick face of the building, it has that stone medallion that it uh, that it reports to there. It does a number of things for us. It gives us an aesthetic that we really like. Again, real material. That would be like Douglas fir, actual timber. And it also allows that profile that we need for the gutter um, and downspout to return to the building. It gives it a physical place to be so that we don't have that metal gutter out in the, in the, in the open um, where it could be you know vulnerable there. So um, that's... Uh, that's the architecture of it. Um, I don't know that um, there's any others. We don't need interior plans. I mean, I don't think it's necessary. To be a quick question, David. The, the railing. Could you speak to that material? Because it looks pretty impressive. Yeah, the railing is a is a uh, precast, um, like a permacast, and it's got a um, traditional uh, newel uh, look to it. You know, like a pilaster uh, look to it, and it is. Um, continuous top rail, and then at the code, you know, maximum of the four inch uh, openings in there, we've got a, uh, a traditional uh, profile on that. The read of it will be um, as though it's a, like a stone um, balcony. It'll actually be um, a composite material, though, so that we get the, the, the keep the weight down. Nice job. Very nice. Thank you. And there is no sub floor below that, correct? There's actually a basement. Oh, there is a basement. Yeah, there is a full basement in the building. It's mechanical for the most part. Mechanical okay. and um, the same not, footprint as the building. That's right. It does. Yeah. There was a there was a point in the design where we were gonna have partial and then after we did core borings and talked to the geotechnical engineers, by the time we got the differential um, you know, design set up in there. It was it was as economical just to have a full basement under there. And it is the uh, the foundation walls are they poured walls? Their design is ivory block, so reinforced okay. block is what we got in there now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any audience comments? Please come up, sir. Yep. Introduce yourself. Hi. Uh, it's nice to see Jeff and, and Ted and a number of folks that I know. And for those that I don't, I'm Matt Boy. Um, Ed and the commission, thanks for having uh, this hearing uh, each month and an opportunity for the township residents to weigh in. Um, and a great presentation, I think, by both the, the engineer and the architect. Uh, I live next door to the, the proposed building. Um, 
on the East McMurray Road side. So I'm in uh, the property that's just below in this diagram here. Um, my wife's with me tonight, Leslie, as is my daughter, Caitlin. Connor's playing soccer, as you guys could imagine. Um, but, in, in, you know, I think overall, uh, I'll keep my comments short because I know the Steelers kick off before too long, right? But um, obviously we have some questions and I think we have some concerns, some of which I think maybe already are addressed by the plans. It would be interesting if someone on the commission would detail out for us the dozen points that are, uh, because we had an opportunity to come down and see the plans in your office, but we didn't get to hear what the 12 requirements are. Would you do that, Ed? Go ahead. A lot of them are standard that we do on all new developments. There are agreements that we make the developer sign, stormwater maintenance, the site plan improvement agreement. Um, condition two is that the owners enter into a right-of-way dedication agreement with the township, and what that is is we're gonna, the developer has agreed to dedicate the right-of-way necessary for the intersection improvements that PennDOT will ultimately need. He has agreed to dedicate that to the township, so we'll hold that when it's needed for PennDOT. Okay. Um, he has to provide us his financial capability to carry out this project. Uh, he has to lay out his plan so that the PennDOT project can happen without any interference. That's condition four. Condition five is they need all the requirements of the Peters Township Sanitary Authority prior to issuing a building permit. They have to clean up some items from our township engineer on the plan. Um, so that, that needs to be done before we let them start any site work or get a building permit. We want the retaining wall to, the material of the retaining wall to match and complement the building. We always require, when we're dealing with a commercial site, we reserve the right to require light adjustments to the exterior lighting after their lights are up and in place. If we see problems, if we see light glaring onto the road or into your home, mm -hmm. we're going to make them adjust that. Okay. All mechanical equipment needs to be screened from view. We're not approving any signs as part of this uh, approval tonight. They have to come to us and get separate sign permits. They have to get a demolition permit prior to tearing the building down. And we always require that the the applicant owner and his general contractors meet with us in a pre-construction meeting before we let them get started and we, before we let them start on the building or any site improvements. We meet, we go over everything, we talk about, you know, our working hours. We don't want them there at six in the morning waking up the neighborhood. We talk about keeping mud off the road and, and you know, respecting the neighbors and, and making sure that we're all on the same page with what the plans are calling for. Okay. And I just wrote down a couple that we'll have Planning Commission consider. We want to protect those existing buffer trees as, as, to the maximum extent practicable. I think those trees are doing the job now. Correct. And um, also that yard drain, we want to maybe make that a condition that we work with you to have the, that little green drain there. Mm -hmm. We want that replaced so that it drains better. That would be good. So if we can add those two conditions and any other conditions that the Planning Commission deals is necessary. Okay. Thank you, Ed. I appreciate that. So um, I think our, our concerns are pretty simply gathered in two categories. Um, one has to do with what you all would call the storm water management, or what I'm calling the water runoff. <laughs> um, I think uh, the engineer who presented did a nice job of talking th you through the way the water works today on the property and the fact that there's what I think of as a wetland, but it was referred to as a, a a Rain. rainfall Rain. pond or something like that. Rain, Rain garden. Um, as was described, that's in bad condition right now. Um, it's it's not been kept up. It's on the the commercial property, not on our property, and it doesn't. It it, it overfills and it and it fills onto my drive. 
so the and to your point, if we could ex if we could take care of that, if that could be cleaned up and, and thinned out and so forth, and then we could expand that drain, we might be able to solve that problem together. I'm surprised that's, I think that's worded in one of the conditions that I summarized. Okay. That's something that we will we yeah, talk, we talk about them. That's part of what we require that they do is make sure that that is cleaned out and operating properly. We don't okay. feel it's operating properly. Properly. That's why that water is real, it's real wet right there. Okay. So I think in keeping with the water runoff uh, question or concept, the, the existing hill beyond that, that wetland area, which is down kind of at the corner of the property, this would be the, like the lower left where the sharp point is on the diagram. There's also water you can sort of see in this diagram. This is a, this is a hillside here sloping down toward our drive. And our drive often has dirt all over it right here and into our, our grass area here because this is not well cared for today. This is a, an area that should be either grass grown or mulched, but it's just dirt and it's just running off. Um, so I would like to ask the commission to, and, and would impede, implore to the uh, owner of the property to consider um, you know, addressing that issue as well. Uh, again, water runoff, there's water, but there's also dirt and, and quite frankly, the existing trees the root system, you know, isn't good because the, all the dirt or much of the dirt that's around the roots of the existing trees that are there, which are nice trees to your point at, the root system is, is really failing because there's, on, on my side of those trees, the dirt's washed away. Um, so I would ask the, the commission to consider that as, as part of the whole stormwater management. It's, it's not just the draining to the lower left of this diagram. It's really the draining all the all along the bottom green edge of this, this diagram. Are those trees on your property? No, sir. No, Ted. They're on the, um, they're on the other property. Okay. They belong to the other property, I believe. I can point out if you like it. The notes on our landscaping plan stipulate that all of our sites will be stable. So there won't be any areas of dirt left. Everything's either going to have grass, good grass growing, or it's going to have landscaping um, and appropriate service trees so you wouldn't have that problem. So on that side, we, we may have to make a field decision as to whether the big trees stay with the roots snarled up like they yeah. are, or they come down and the grass, everything, and put new trees. Because we may not be able to have both, but uh, I, we do have the commitment that when it's all said and done, the site will be stable. <coughs> it has to be on that snow on our landscape plan. That's why you know we want to worry, protect the existing buffer trees to the maximum extent practical. If, if there's a reason why some of those trees need to come out, we, we need to be able to do that. Yeah. We'll, we'll rely on the experts and the commission and the, the engineers and so forth and Ed to, to sort of address that. And I think we can all get comfortable with the conversation we've had tonight on the water runoff. The, the second big category that we have as a concern, Jeff, is the, is the privacy. Um, and so, you know, we've gotten accustomed to kind of cars coming and going, you know, on that property today with the daycare. And so, you know, there's little that we could say. We, we bought the home in that condition, right? We bought the home with the daycare there. So we're, we acknowledge that there's parking lot there. There's, there's cars in and, and through there. And if it's less traffic anticipated, that's, that's great. I think what's, what's changing now is we're going from a, from a one-story structure that, that, by the way, because it's elevated, like I said, it's uphill from our house. It's a one-story structure today that really looks like a two-story to us because it's up high, higher than we are. Now we're going to a two-story building, and if we went, if we could pull up uh, Mr. Uh, the, the architect um, diagram, you, you'd see the balcony. That that balcony on the top left, the south elevation, it's a second-story balcony that faces my home. My daughter's bedroom window faces that balcony. So from a privacy standpoint, you understand why I'd be concerned. You might be concerned if your 10-year-old daughter's bedroom faced that balcony. So that's a concern for me. It's a, it's a significant concern for me. And I would like to ask Mr. Wilding and Mr. McLean to consider addressing that and whether that balcony could be moved to another side of the building. And I would like to ask the commission to consider making that a requirement of the project moving forward. 
among them. That's what the landscaping buffer is for, is to help screen you that those trees will grow and, and provide you the buffer that you're seeking. Um, you know, I think that balcony adds to the character of the building, so I don't know that we can mandate that they not do the balcony. I, I'm asking them to consider that. I, I think it's it's an appealing looking building. I'm not, not questioning that at all. I'm just wondering why that building, why that second floor balcony needs to face my home rather than the intersection with East McMurray and Bebel. So if I, if I had a stairwell with, as was mentioned, generous glass facing my home, I might be even more comfortable than someone, you know, again, basically having an obser observation deck, which is two stories above my house because we're already a story above where we're set. So it's, it's, an, it's a request of the commission to consider it as a, as a requirement. And it's a, it's, as, a, as a good neighbor, it's a request of, the, of Mr. Wilding and his group to consider adjusting uh, the plans for that. That's all. That's all I have, gentlemen. Thank you for your time. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks. <coughs> Thanks, man. Anybody else? Please, please go on. Yourself. Good evening. Um, my name is Stephanie Cherney, and I'm the other adjacent property owner on 947 B Belt Road. Okay. So I was going to wait. I'm here. Okay. You're right here. <laughs> um, I'll echo. I probably would have had exactly almost the same presentation as Mr. Wood. Um, we also experience a ton of water. I'm actually going to leave too. Um, back here on the site right in this area. Um, so much so that our yard is about 100% um, wet all of the time back there. So I think it's just thinking about what the gradient is here um, on that side. The tree health back there is something that I think might need to be addressed as well. We had two trees fall. One actually fell on our house from that property. But I know a little bit about tree health, and I think the three adjacent trees that are the largest mature ones there aren't actually that healthy, so they might not be salvageable. So, um, and I too have an issue with privacy. I guess I said we too, my husband's back there. Um, for the same exact reasons, right now the property has a privacy fence on it. It's about six feet tall. Um, my entire backside of my house is completely open to that if the screening is just um, an iron fence. And our daughter's bedroom is also on the same side as, that ho as our house. So we've been really worried about removing that privacy fence and adding in just some traditional screening because the building will look directly into the whole backside of our property. And you're saying now there is a privacy fence? There is a privacy fence on the property. Um, we believe it's owned as it stands currently by the existing property. It's falling down, it's not in great condition. Um, so even if the screening is put up and the fence is put up and there isn't an adjustment to the privacy, we will erect a privacy fence um, to ensure that we at least have that coverage back there. I'll, I'll interrupt for just a second to point out that can you that, come change the door? that privacy fence in particular, it's not on our property. It actually would be on your okay. property. Then, so, um, that's all. That's good to know because it's not it's not oriented that way at, as it stands. Um, it's built as if the privacy fence is for the business itself. So, but for the record, I agree. I'd like to think about um, adding some conditions around specific privacy related to um, the view. I know both our homes have a lot of windows. Um, we have a mid-century modern and our entire backside of our house is basically glass. Um, so it'd be interesting to see a little bit more detail around what that screening would look like. So that's all I have for now. Thank you. Any other audience comments? <coughs> <coughs> Hi there. I am Carolyn Ponte. I live directly beside Hoy's, so it's not shown on there, but it is the next house down on McMurray. There are, um, There is one thing about the water, first of all. We are getting water. I'm, I'm concerned that they, they said that um, 
there would be a 20% reduction in uh, water drainage. Is that right with the current with the proposed site? No, that the point that. Um Mr. Magrino made was the ordinance requires that you look at 20% of the existing uh, impervious area and consider that as meadow in calculations. So it's not a, a reduction factor. It has to do with the background of the map. But to your your point, yeah, the numbers are reduced. So 100%, okay. yeah, not 100%. Okay. What's but running off there right now, less will run off after we're done because of the tanks that we okay. install to retain it. Why though, why would there be less if there's more asphalt, that would be less absorbent material. I would think that would be that would make more runoff. It does make more runoff, and that's why we have to put a system in that captures it mm -hmm. and detains it. So that's okay. why you'll see developments that go in and, and pave a field for a dip or whatever. Uh, they end up putting in some type of stormwater management. The most visible one you see is a stormwater management pond. You see developments of these ponds that hold back the stormwater. Most sites in high value locations like this, we put it underground. We don't have the area to put a big pond on this property mm -hmm. or anything like that. So well, we put okay. systems underground to do that. Okay. My concern is that I hear, I know they've been having problems with water. I'm hearing that the folks on Bebout are having problems with water. As the next <coughs> house down, we're having problems with water over the last three years. And I hear that that little, um, what we think of as a little wetland, a little rain water garden thing, um, needs to be dug out and kind of reestablished. Re My concern, though, is that that will continue over time to fill up, and then the same thing will occur. The first condition that we place on this new development is they have to sign a stormwater maintenance agreement with us. So that's an agreement that we have that's recorded. They are responsible to maintain that. We have our engineers go out and check it. If there's something yeah, not there's right about that facility, we contact them and they fix it. And as part of this whole initial project, they're going to go in there and clean that all out. We're going to see an improvement in stormwater after this project is. When do you think that will be? And I'll tell you why. Because their oak tree is ginormous, magnificent tree. It is drenched in water all the time to the point where you can't even cut the grass under it. And now down in our yard, which is even lower, it's like a marshland so much of the time that it makes it difficult to cut our grass now. So how long will it take? you know, going forward to even see any kind of an improvement, let alone hopefully it will it will rectify the current situation. Well, the, like, when is this my proposed? My understanding that they're going to get started in the spring on this project, so yeah. sometime over the next <coughs> spring, summer, we should see improvement. You, and, as the downstream property yeah. owner, should see improvement. Are, are you the current owners now? Yes. yes. Could something be done to that little marshland to bring us a little bit of relief on on the East McMurray side, the place that is the the main the main place that you're going to the, the point down here on the on the left on the bottom left? Can anything be <coughs> done with it this fall? I mean, it is a total marshland. I mean, it's. I think it's, there it's probably kind of could be, but I think it's going to be best that it all be done as one big project mm. so it all functions. And I see. Um, the other thing is, um, it, do you really feel, do you feel comfortable that there is, um, that because there will be more asphalt and therefore more water, that the, um, the plans that they have will actually handle this so that we won't always be coming to see you, okay? No, <laughs> so that we always sure. won't be coming to see you, to okay? Sure Thank you. Because we don't want to do that. We want to leave these folks yeah. in peace, yeah, too. Yeah, so the Harsman Group has submitted um, plans and reports, um, signed, sealed. We'll review those and finalize them. We provided car our, um, comments to them. Um, they're addressing them, so yes. Okay, the, the short answer is yes. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll remember your face. Sir. Thank you. <laughs> okay, your name. <laughs> and, and, and to that point, um, I 
regulations will have my name, my license, my seal. <laughs> So okay. you can remember my name. Too. Okay. okay. All righty. Thank yeah. you. The the other concern I had was the um, the landscaping, and I'm speaking for mostly for my neighbors' um, case is that if they are trees, if they are shade trees, in the fall and all through the winter, they're not going to provide any bit of privacy whatsoever for these folks at all. Nothing. And they will be open. And these folks have a pool. And that I'm, I'm addressing the balcony again. The balcony is just, if I were them, I would move away and I would not want to see my neighbors, my nice neighbors, move away um, because they have no privacy. I'm concerned still about what they were talking about earlier, which was the balcony on the um, south side, I guess, of McMurray that faces the boys' property. I mean, they can see not only into her bedroom, but they can see into the pool, too. I'm not sure why the balcony has to be around that side. I mean, I, I think it's wonderful that it be, would be there for the employees and uh, it looks nice, et cetera, but I, I just don't think it should come at the expense of their privacy and really their concerns for safety. As a mom, well, I'm a grandmom now, but. I would be very concerned about who was working there and who could see my children. You know, are they really going to vet all their employees and their cleaning crew and make sure there's no uh, criminals? I mean, you know, I mean, that seems like an awful expense for a business owner to have, and yet it seems like too much of a worry to me if I were living there and I'm only living one door down from it. I'm not going to talk about the balcony. That's going to be a discussion. <laughs> okay, we're talking we about can water. Add, we can work with the landscape architect and maybe add some evergreen arborvitae so it's more of a year-round screen. I think I would appreciate it if I lived next door to it <laughs> instead right of one yard down. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other audience comments? Please come up. Carolyn Towns from Bob. I just want to go back to the water issue just one, one more time. You said you're going to expand that grate to take more yeah, water. That's what the task that is to do. Right. It's the grate that's on the Hoy property. Right. Okay. Uh, again, I cut that grass, and I know it's uh, it's near impossible for me to cut the grass. There's a pipe that runs under my property, down through the property next to mine, and all the way down to the creek. Okay. That's an eight-inch pipe that carries that water from all of their stuff through Hoy's down spots through all that stuff. So now you're going to make you're going to increase the size of that grate to carry more water down in there. Not more water. The, the water that is being controlled and comes off of that site okay. through a combination st underground stormwater management facility. It's all okay. not just pouring out. It's slowly being released out. Okay, but somebody's taking a look at. That pipe that runs all the way down through these properties and said, yeah, this is going to manage it, because right now it's not. For com for compar just for comparison, please, please come up, sir. Oh, I'd be glad to. I'm sorry. The, uh, the size of the, the outlet hole, or you call it the, the, the last point of discharge okay. to that pond from our site is four inches. So all of the runoff from the paving area that's coming out there will be released through a four inch hole, which is a lot smaller than that eight inch pipe receiving. And so, and that's what's there right now is a four inch hole, um, but we're in fact reducing even the amount of water that goes to that. So if that gives you some perspective of a four inch diameter versus the eight inch diameter for receiving pipes. I thought that might be helpful. It's helpful. All I, wanted, all I know is I'd rather not be out there again another year trying to cut my grass. Because if you come down East McMurray and take a look, 724, 728, there's nothing but ruts in our yard because we can't manage. The water's not being managed. Okay. Got it. Hey, thanks. Thank you. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. um, oh, you want to come up and talk about the balcony, please? Yeah, I can actually. Um, one, the one point that I wanted to make on the balconies is, again, this is, we're saying, this is our south elevation here. And if we look at, if we can go back to the aerial uh, view, um, if, uh, the site plan, there's a perception, I understand, that this is a one-story building right now, and we're going to have a two-story building, and that's true. But our two-story building is not in this location. We're not replacing that building with a new one. We're basically coming over here. We're, we're much more along the edge of McMurray Road. So our building is here. 
So if we look at you know the home that's here, and I understand that our balconies are actually here. They're designed for more of a, a perception of a view down McMurray Road. So we're out near the road and we're turned this way. You know, we're not we're not looking from the point where the where that existing is. So I think I hope that that helps. The perception here is that this balcony right here is not looking toward your home. It's looking out and away from it. We're looking here. Basically, there's the balcony right there. That outline right there. We're looking down the road that way. And those are, that's the second story, and those are the offices, that's a quiet spot in the building. It's not, it's not a main meeting area or a main conference room. Does it, does, where would their house sit in relation to, is it way back there? I believe it's here. See how the grades change and there's a flat right spot down. here. I okay. think that the home, your, your home is here. And like I said, this is, this is much more related to the public roads. What's the distance from the closest corner of the building to the far edge of the parking lot? Um, so oh, I see, like from from, from here, there say, to that, there. To, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that's a on there. Um, I'm trying to think of. This is 24 feet between the driving lanes. Are we about 65? 70. Feet? So we're probably yeah, every bit of that. We're counting the buffer. I think we're probably more like 85 or, or 90 even from this corner right here over to the to the property line. And again, we're, we're landscaping. And how tall is each story? Heavily in here. Uh, we have a 12 foot, four inch, four floor. I so think. a so person would be standing eight, the persons would be 18 feet off the ground. And those t trees are like 20 feet or something like that in the end. Right. We have so you'll be looking pool. pretty much at the, at the trees because the trees are at the same elevation as the foot, as the bottom of the building. So really, those trees, once they once they mature, if they're evergreens, that would be the ticket, and they would they would mask the uh, they would screen the house really well. Is that is that house a two story? Yes, it's a two story. Our home's a three story. Th does it make sense in thinking about your analysis here and how the house, I think it helps where the building sits, mm -hmm. but to sort of stop the balcony from wrapping the whole way around? Yes. To, to this side. Yeah, so their side to basically just to stop it. Instead of having it wrapped the whole way around, so in a sense, what you're proposing is looking straight down McMurray Road rather than to the back side of the building. So the, the balcony doesn't wrap around, it really just stops. At the corner? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a pretty significant architectural piece of the building. Now, again, the you think about the use of a balcony in an office condition like this it is very very original. you know from the inside when you're in there and the glass the balcony actually kind of cuts your view off a bit from the offices from the offices I agree with right so I this one here is is slender right there and it's mostly there's one um, uh, conference room here a small meeting yeah, that, think that that's we have big. access out there, so I mean, bringing it around the corners kind of hard. Okay, well, how about attention. the other proposals? Yeah. Switch sides. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the switching sides really doesn't work for us. Again, we've got that that wall here. We've got the the mechanical equipment here, and that is the roof. If we we think of the the nature of this intersection, that's kind of the urban side of this. You know, that's that's the corner. That's facing the corner. There. Yeah, so um, we wouldn't really be. Able able to do what we're doing inside the building by by switching everything over to that side. Hey, I'm glad you make a point too. So we still got windows all the way around the second story as well, right? That's right. So is there a difference between looking out a window versus standing on a balcony? You got the same view. Right. Um, and it's I mean if the building meets all of the zoning requirements of the township. So while I appreciate the point. I don't know that there's much we can do to leave the concern concerning sides plan. I'll address, I'll address your question. As a father, and there are a number of fathers in the room, Jeff, I'm just going to approach the podium for a few minutes. Sure. There's a number of fathers in the room. I would guess Mr. Wilding might even be a father living in the township. When people are on their breaks, and we all know, unfortunately, as fathers, our worst nightmare is a pervert working next door or living next door. When people are on their breaks, 
On, a, on an observation deck, 18, as Ted's estimate suggests, 18 feet above your swimming pool, your daughter's bedroom, it's a, par it's a problem for a township resident. I think we can all understand that. It's different if somebody's sitting at their computer screen when they should be working. So yes, it's very different if they're on their break, on their observation deck, versus at their desk or in a conference room working. I spend a lot of my time in conference rooms, so I, I know this. Um, I would, Jeff, I like your idea. I think your idea is a golden one. And I, I would ask that Mr. McLean and Mr. Wilding consider reordering, reorienting the observation deck so that it doesn't face my home. If, if there's someone standing at the far southeast side of this observation deck, they're looking directly into my swimming pool. Dave, hey, can I ask you a question? I'm, uh, uh, please come up, sir. Yeah. I'm, I'm Jim Wilding. I'm the co-owner of uh, the firm. Um, and I think, I could be wrong, Dave, isn't that end of the building, isn't that my office and Greg's office? Yeah, that's the... That's so that the balcony office. is my balcony, and it's Greg's, the, my partner's balcony. Um, so it's private? not, sir? It's private to our offices. So the, the only people that are going to be out there on that balcony would be me or my partner, Greg Weimer. And one thing that might make you feel a little bit better, too, is um, we, we're, we're not there... We're, we're not there for anything other than to do our business. We're not there late in the evening. There's not going to be people hanging around on the balconies or anything like that. But on that balcony, the only way to get to it is through my office or Greg's office. If that's true, and that's not what I observed from looking at the south elevation. South elevation, to me, if we could bring that up again, suggested that the balcony is a continuous balcony that wraps all the way around that side of the building. And, and, and it does, and I think yeah, it goes to door. the scale of the building. What you have right here is you've got Greg Weimer's office and Jim Wilding's office, and then this is a conference room, and I say conference room, it's a meeting room that is only entered directly from Greg Weimer's office. And then on this side, you've got Jim Wilding's office with a conference room, a small meeting room that's adjacent immediately to his. So those are not, this is the conference room here for the building. Okay. And, and primarily 90% of the client work in the building is on the first level. The office is on the Very quickly, Jeff, I like your idea. And if that wouldn't be considered by the gentleman, I would ask that the commission and Ed consider requiring that it be uh, evergreen trees. I like, I like your suggestion on that, Ted, or whomever brought that up. I also like the idea of there being a privacy fence required between the property and my property. So uh, I'm open to ideas. I want to be a good neighbor as we have a new neighbor coming into to the neighborhood. But as any good father would, I have to stand up here and voice my concerns to the commission, and I appreciate you entertaining them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have Thanks. one small follow-up, too. I'll, I'll echo that. But I think it could be helpful if we could request um, maybe a perspective view from the balcony, um, just some sight lines on what we might expect to see out of the windows. I think that'd be helpful, too, because even if we deal with this issue, the other backside of the property is completely facing our open, um, our open view. So it'd be nice if we could see a perspective of um, at scale, what might be seen outside of the window. I think that would help sort of um, calm some of the fears on that. They'd have to volunteer that. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> we are, you are providing the requisite buffers between the two different uses though, as required by code. That's correct. And That's right. the, a privacy fence is only gonna be so high that it may not alleviate your direct concern about a balcony overlooking into the home or because of the elevation of the So I don't, I don't know that that's going to fix that particular question. Um, and I am encouraged that this is accessible via private offices, which I don't pretend to know the business, but we're a financial firm. I assume those are relatively controlled. Um, and I don't know the quite can the purview of this board to Can we see the internal? adjust? Sorry, we, we, weren't, internal plans. we weren't able to see the internal plans you can, tonight. Yeah, you can come in. Uh, you can, What's the depth of the balcony? 
You can hold stop. It, it is about, um, you can see right here, this is about, say, five feet or so, five or six feet, and so it comes along here. And then at this spot out here, when we get out toward New Prairie Road, it, it comes out a bit more. So it's, it's deeper here, and it stays narrow. With that. So it's more decorative than functional. It's not like you're going to have office picnics out on the balcony. You can't have them. I'm not even sure how often they'll go out. Yeah, so this is this is the, the like we're saying, Greg Weimer office, this is the Jim Wilding office. This is a conference room that's that's dedicated to Mr. Weimer. This is a conference room in the front that's that um, belongs to um, Jim Wilding. This this whole space right here from this spot over here is their domain so we take like like i say the client work is primarily on the first level when you get to the top here this third of the the second floor of the building is for those two principles Mr. McLean, the, the left of the stairs is the executive suite that's correct and that's the right. center conference room between the two partners offices those doors that show to the outside mm -hmm. to okay, your yes. what are those doors sir those go from that that meeting room to the balcony out here so and this is the profile of the balcony right here. That's that's the balcony right there. And those that whole area is controlled by the principles of the business. That's right. Yes. Okay. So uh, let me ask a question before we get too far here. We as a planning commission are limited on telling them where they can put their balcony. Yeah. Absolutely. We're, we're getting, so this is off, we're getting this is simply up to a decision between the owner. Please understand that this board has limited powers. Uh, this is a permitted uh, use uh, in this location and as long as they do everything t uh, within our uh, code we're limited on what we can require the developer to do so as a good neighbor maybe the developer is willing to work with you outside of this board but we have limitations just let you know okay thank you so, Ed, what, what kind of additional recommendations do you have? 13, 14, 15, protect, protect the existing buffer trees to the maximum extent practicable. 13, the yard drain on the adjoin, adjoining property to the east be replaced. And the buffer be a combination evergreen deciduous tree buffer. Other commissioner thoughts? Motion. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion. I uh, make a motion that the Planning Commission approve the site plan for the Confluence Financial Partner with the original 12 conditions and the additional three conditions that were stated by Edwards now. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Any uh, other items? Yeah. Meeting adjourned.